programming project for which these materials were created asks others to create three interlinked programs to allow students to make and read course materials. Each topic should be small and self-contained, not a large piece of work. Instructors will need to be able to create books, topics and atom lists. They will not be creating the materials on this, that's down to the students but the students will need a guide to the sort of topics being created. Students need to be able to create materials for atoms and to make them available for others. Other students will need to be able to find, browse and read atoms. Welcome to this, the second video on the programming project. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video we're going to look at how you model the data. We're going to look at two UML diagrams, the use case diagram and the class diagram. But these are only there to illustrate the points being made. This is not a video about how to use UML, even if you find some of the things useful. So let's get started. Let's start with the use case diagram. Here is a use case diagram and as you can see I've got three actors. The term actor was a mistranslation from the Swedish and what it really meant was people who are interacting with your computer system. So they may be people as they are in this case or they may be another computer system or some sort of telecommunications device. In either case, we're looking at what these people want to do with your program. So, for example, the instructor will want to edit a book. Now, that may mean creating a book, or it may mean editing one that's already been started. The instructor may want to edit a chapter list, or edit an item list. All of these should be possible for the instructor. Then we come to those who want to author atoms. They need to be able to choose from the atom list and edit a particular atom. And to do that, they need to be able to find an atom. Finally, we've got something I'm calling research, the person who wants to read the atoms themselves. And the researcher will want to find an atom and view the atom. So that's the overview. A use case diagram shows the actors, human or computer actors, and the tasks that they want to perform with your program. The three main actors in our case are the instructor, the author and the researcher. But why not include a technician? Well, a technician will be using your program, they will upload it onto the system for you, but they're not actually going to use the program itself. They're merely setting up the infrastructure for your program. So we don't need a technician. We only show the actors as the people who are going to use the computer program that you're creating. Now let's move on to the class diagram. The class diagram here shows various classes that we're going to need for this particular computer program. Now you may say, oh, I can think of all sorts of other things that are needed. And that's probably true. But what I'm trying to do is to show you the overview of this project. If you have clever ideas that include other things that you're really desperate to bring in, do so. It's your project. So let's go through this diagram. At the top we've got a person. Instructors, authors and researchers are all people. They're a type of person. And so these people are going to need a name, a forename, a surname. They're going to need maybe an account ID, that sort of thing. And that's what will go in person and will be inherited by the classes instructor, author and researcher. The instructor will have, and the author will have, and the researcher will have, well, yes, we can debate those. There are other fields that need to go in all of these. And it's going to be down to you to add those fields. An instructor will create a book. So an instructor who creates a book will be the author of that book. So a book has an author. An atom has an author. But a book 
is a collection of chapters, and a chapter is a collection of atoms. You'll notice that the symbols for these three kinds are different. We've got the open triangle for is a type of. We've got the filled diamond for has an. And we've got the open diamond for is a collection of. And these are the diagramming tools that we need for UML. So let's go over that again. A class diagram shows which things we will need and how they're related. A good di class diagram, by the way, can be used as an entity relationship diagram. If you imagine that you've got your class diagram set up with all the data fields and the methods, well, we can disregard the methods and call it an entity relationship diagram. We have a table list and a list of all the fields and their types that need to go into the database. So being clever and thinking through your class diagram can help you complete two major jobs. A good UML design program will generate the code for the classes for you. So the more effort you spend on getting this class diagram correct, the more programming you will have done straight away. I'm using Argo UML for this and that does an awful lot of the work for me. You may want to download it since I'm going to be showing you the project files later on. So there are the three link kinds. There's the type of link type. So a researcher is a type of person. There's the has a link type. An atom has an author. And collection of. A chapter is a collection of atoms. And these three symbols are shown at the one end of the class diagram, if we're talking in entity relationship terms. We can now add the fields and the methods. When I say we, well, really I mean you.